In the previous video, we demonstrate how to connect an IP camera system in the factory where there's no network to another building to have the internet access. We use one pair of wireless bridges to connect the network video recorder in the factory and the router in the second building so the owner can watch those cameras when he's visiting the customers. I'll put the link on the top right screen in case you want to watch it. Now the owner has a new requirement. He also wants to have the Wi-Fi coverage in his factory. In this video, we will show how to extend the network from the second building to the factory by using the wireless connectivity. Let's get started. This is the setup in the last video. We have a PoE network video recorder. I did remove the IP cameras to simplify the setup. The network video recorder is connected to this wireless bridge. The wireless bridge has established the Wi-Fi connectivity with another wireless bridge in second building. We have the full signal. Now the client wants to have the Wi-Fi coverage in this area. We are going to use this TP-Link router and connect this TP-Link router to this wireless bridge to have the internet access. First, let me power up this TP-Link router. The good news is we do have a spare internet port on this wireless bridge. One internet port is connected to our POE network video recorder. I'm going to use this short patch code to link another internet port to the LAN port on this router. Remember, we need to use the LAN port, not the RAM port. Then the setup will be just like this. But one thing important, we do need to disable the DHCP server on this router. We don't want to have two DHCP server in the same network. Since our original router will handle the DHCP server, we assign the IP address to any device connected to this network. We do need to turn off the DHCP server in this router. It's not that difficult. We need to connect a computer to the, this LAN port or this network. Then find the IP address of this TP-Link router, log into the router, and turn off the DHCP server. But there's some issues in this setup since both cameras and the router share the same Wi-Fi connectivity between these two wireless bridges. Remember we mentioned the idea bandwidth between these two wireless bridges is about 300 megabits per second, but that is the result comes from the LAN. Usually, in practical setup, we devise the ideal bandwidth to 3 to have a saved bandwidth for our design. The ideal bandwidth between these two wireless bridges is about 300 megabits per second. We divide it to 3, we got 100 megabits per second. It is the safe bandwidth with enough redundancy to handle the harsh environment, such as the raining, snow, interference from other devices. Remember, we do have 9 IP cameras on the PoE network video recorder. It consumes about 50 to 60 megabit per second. So it leaves only 40 megabit per second for our Wi-Fi coverage. It's not a good speed of bandwidth for the Wi-Fi coverage. Is there any method to optimize this setup? Yes, you can install another pair of wireless bridges and connect this router to the network in the second building through this new wireless bridges inventory. This Wi-Fi has the dedicated wireless link to the network in the second building. Now let's make it. I'm going to install these new wireless bridges in this location and connect this TP-Link router to this new wireless bridge. First let me disconnect the cable from this wireless bridge and connect the PoE port on this new wireless bridge. We are going to use this PoE injector to power these wireless bridges. There are two Ethernet ports. One is the PoE port, another is the LAN port. First, let me power up this PoE injector. And we need to remove the cable from this router and connect it to this LAN port. And use this short patch code to link this LAN port to our router. 
The PoE injector basically is just a power supply unit. It injects the power to this Ethernet cable and power our wireless bridge. Now let's move to another location and install another wireless bridge. I'm going to add this PoE switch in this building. This PoE switch can provide the power for both wireless bridges. Meanwhile, it also can provide some extra Ethernet port for the devices in this building. First, let me power up this PoE switch. We will connect the first wireless bridges to this PoE switch. This PoE switch will provide the PoE power. We are not going to use the PoE injector. And I need this short patch code to link our router to our PoE switch. The PoE switch will distribute the internet through this internet port. We are good to install the second wireless bridge. We need short patch code to link the PoE port and connect this wireless bridge to our PoE switch. The setup is ready. We have two wireless bridges connected to this PoE switch and the PoE switch will provide the power for both wireless bridges. One thing I want to point out is in this factory, these two systems has no cross path. The IP camera system and the router will have two independent network linked to the switch and another building. The network video recorder will take the wireless link on the top and the router will take a wireless link on the bottom. Both links has cleaned 100 megabit per second safe bandwidth. You may be wondering, can we use one master to work with the two slaves in the factory, like the point-to-multipoint wireless connectivity? Technically, it works, but it's not going to improve the bandwidth because the total bandwidth is determined by the master, which is just 100 megabit per second safe bandwidth. Alright, that's all for today's video. If you have any question, please post your message in the comment section below.